Okay, so for the first element of thought, it's purpose. So what I wrote down for that is that um, when you're trying to think about something or decide on something, you kind of have a goal in mind. So you already have a state of mind going into it. And um, for like objectives and goals, it's kind of like what you're trying to accomplish or what um, everything you need to consider when you're trying to get something done or just what you're thinking about in mind. It's kind of hard to describe without using the words purpose, goal, or goal in them mm -hmm. because um, purpose is generally what you're, what you're, there's like something motivating you and that's usually the purpose when you're thinking about something. Um, and that will kind of shape like um, all of your thoughts around that thing. So that's what I have. Um, I did questions at issues. Um, so I wrote down basically just uh, to help figure out what the problem is. You always need to be asking like the students questions about what's going on. Um, what can I help you with? Uh, and that'll just help build um, you be able to fix it in the long run and maybe help them switch the way they look at things. Um, and you can use it for potential problems by like asking questions throughout the lesson and just making sure you reiterate everything. Um, yeah. Um, so I did number three, which was information. And it's just looking at the facts, data, evidence, observations, reasons, um, anything that you use should be accurate and relevant to the problem that you're trying to solve. And it also helps to look at information that relates to the opposing view in relation to your problem, just to help you give more of a well-rounded solution. Um, you should restrict your claims to those that are supported by the data that you have, and it's just going by the factual evidence. I did number four, interpretation and inference, solutions and conclusions. And inference is a conclusion we come to by analyzing information. It is inductive reasoning and looking at facts that make a conclusion from those facts. And interpretation is an inference from a specific point of view. However, two people might have the same facts, but with different points of view. They might each come to different solutions to the problem. Um, I did number five as well, which is concepts. And concepts are definitions, models, laws, theories, and principles. Um, so it kind of goes with information. Number three, they kind of, I feel like those two go hand in hand when you're thinking critically about solving the problem. Um, just like with information, you should look at opposing concepts, um, alternative concepts, again, just to give you a more well-rounded perspective and solution. Um, you also need to be clear about the concepts that you're using and use them justifiably. So don't just use a theory to use it, make sure that it aligns with your solution and what you're trying to figure out. Um, and the main thing with that is just to identify key concepts and explain them clearly. What number are we on? Six. Six. Did you wanna do that one, Megan, or do you want me to do it? Um, you can do it if you did it. Okay. Um, so for six, it's assumptions. Um, basically, assumptions are beliefs that someone takes for granted. Um, assumptions need to be clear and justified by evidence. Um, you need to ask yourself, am I assuming something that I shouldn't be assuming? Um, and why is this assumption leading me to this conclusion? Um, Basically, we just should, shouldn't assume anything unless we have factual evidence. Um, and that's basically all I wrote with that one. Okay, so um, for number seven is implications and consequences. So what my understanding of what that means is an implication is basically um, 
after reviewing like the evidence and everything else we've talked about, it's kind of like the conclusion you come to, um, or just kind of like using context clues and then coming to a conclusion. And um, based on your per perception, it could read, you know, the consequence could either be negative or positive, just based on what your perception is going into that. And um, your implications just kind of follow from your thoughts about what you're you're reading or what you're teaching or what you're talking about. And you just kind of have to be careful about the way you put out certain information or um, making sure things are, un, are unbiased. So you're making um, implications that are also unbiased. Okay, um, and I did number eight, which was a uh, point of view perspectives, frames of reference and orientations. Um, so point of view is a place from which you view something. Um, when we talk about point of view, we discuss what you're looking at and the way you're looking at it. Um, so when thinking through a problem or potential problem, um, it's important to look at it from the potential point of view of the other person you're having the discussion with. Um, and then when looking at it from that way, it can help ease the situation faster and easier. Um, and then I wrote down some questions you can ask yourself uh, when thinking of point of view. Um, you can ask yourself, how am I looking at the situation? Is there another way to look at it um, that I should consider? Um, is my view the only reasonable view? What does my point of view possibly ignore that the other person cares about um and then you also just the main thing is just you have to think of the other person's beliefs heritage age and background to get a better understanding of their uh point of view that sounds good yeah did you i should stop recording this one right? yes you yeah can.